Hello everyone. The purpose of this video is to show you how to do electronic circuit simulation in Python using PySpice. PySpice is an open source Python module which provides a Python interface to the ng-spice circuit simulator. We define the circuit through a netlist in PySpice. The backend simulation is done through ng-spice. The results can be plotted using numpy and matplotlib pack Python packages. You do not need to be familiar with ng-spice in order to use PySpice. This video provides you with the background knowledge that is needed to use PySpice. If you are interested, more information about PySpice is available here. Here is a brief three-step summary of how to install PySpice. First, you need to install Python. I recommend installing the 64-bit version of Python as the latest version of ng-spice requires it. During the installation, please make sure to tick the option to add Python to the path variable in Windows. Second, after installing Python, we can use the pip command to install PySpice. This installs PySpice and all the dependent Python packages. Finally, install ng-spice by using PySpice tool to download and install it using the command syntax shown here. You can check if the installation has worked by running this command in Windows command prompt. Check to make sure that the following message is displayed. In order to understand how to use PySpice, let us look at a simple example provided with PySpice. This example shows the computation of DC biases in a resistor bridge circuit. We can run this module and we get the result for the node voltages in the circuit. Let us look at the code in more detail. This is the PySpice code to simulate the resistor bridge circuit. At the top, we have standard declarations that are needed for PySpice to run properly. The circuit netlist is here. These two lines invoke the DC operating point analysis. Finally, these two lines show the node voltages. When we run the module, we get the simulation result as shown previously. Please pause the video now if you wish to study the code in more detail. The key part of the code that we need to be able to understand is the circuit netlist. Let's look at this in more detail. In circuit simulation, a netlist describes how a circuit is connected. In its simplest form, a netlist consists of a list of circuit components and nodes that, are connect that they are connected to. Recall that in circuit theory, a node is a point in a circuit where two or more circuit elements meet. In the PySpice example, this line defines a circuit and gives it a unique name. This line defines a voltage source labeled input and this voltage source is connected between node 1 and ground. This is the syntax to define the value and unit. In this case the magnitude is 10 volts. This second line is specifying a resistor connected between nodes 1 and 2 labeled as resistor 1 having value 2 kilo ohm. This third line is specifying a resistor R labeled R2 that is connected between nodes 1 and 3 and has value 1 kilo ohm. Similarly, we have three more lines defining the remaining three resistors. 
Please pause the video now if you wish to study this circuit net list and the translated circuit diagram in more detail. PySpice gave the node voltages as 4 volts, 6 volts and 10 volts. Let us verify these values. We can simulate the same bridge circuit in LTSpice or PSpice and we can verify that we get the same result for the node voltages. It is quite instructive to look at the net list in LTSpice and PSpice. We can access the LTSpice net list by going to the view menu and then select SPICE net list. In PSpice, we can access the netlist by going to the analysis menu and then select examine netlist. Comparing these two netlists, we can see that although LTSpice and PSpice use slightly different notation for the numbering of the nodes, the two netlists have quite similar structure. Unfortunately, the LTSpice and PSpice netlists are not directly compatible with PySpice. Thus, we need to be able to write the netlist ourselves for a given circuit. In this video, we will focus on simulation of circuits containing only resistors, independent voltage and current sources, and the four different types of dependent sources. The information shown here is the SPICE syntax summarized from the NG SPICE user manual. This SPICE syntax will help us to understand how to write the PI SPICE netlist properly. The resistor is part name R, the voltage source is part name V, and the current source is part name I. All these parts need to have a unique label. For these parts, we specify the two nodes where the component is connected and also the value of the component. The four dependent sources are part names E, F, G and H. For the two voltage control sources, we specify the two nodes where the device is connected and the two nodes providing the controlling voltage and finally the coefficient value. For the two current control sources, we need to place a zero volt test source in the path of the controlling current and then we specify the name of the test source in the netlist via the VName parameter. We also need to specify the two nodes where the current control source is connected and also the coefficient value. The zero volt test source acts like an ammeter and does not disturb the original circuit. If you are interested, you can find more details in the link shown here. It is quite instructive to compare the valid dependent source netlist names in PSPICE, LTSPICE, NGSPICE and PySPICE. In the PySPICE netlist, we can use H or and F for the two current control sources, but we cannot use E and G for the two voltage control sources as these two labels E and G are not defined in the piece in the Pi Spice netlist. Thus we must use the full acronyms VCVS and VCCS. For the two current control sources, we can either use H or CCVS and F or CCCS. Please make sure to pause the video and make a note of the valid PySpice netlist names for the four dependent sources. Let us take a look at a circuit with a current control voltage source. The controlling current is here, hence we need to connect a zero volt test source such that the controlling current enters the positive terminal of the test source 
and leaves the negative terminal of the test source. By first labeling the nodes and the components, we can easily translate the circuit into a PySpice netlist as shown here. The first five sentences are defining the resistors connected between the respective nodes and having the respective values shown. The next two sentences are defining the 20 volt independent source and the zero volt magnitude test source. Finally, the last sentence defines the current control voltage source. So we have circuit dot H. Here we could have also used the syntax circuit dot CCVS. This dependent source is connected between nodes 5 and circuit ground and the controlling current is flowing through the VTest source and the coefficient is 8. These two lines show the node voltages. In addition, we can also add the following two lines to the code. These two lines get PySpice to output the current in branches that do not contain resistors. So these, this code will cause PySpice to output the current in this branch and this branch and also this branch with the VTest source. This is helpful in getting the solution for the controlling currents. This Python code is also provided within the description text of this video. We can run the code to get the solution, which is shown here. The values of the node voltages obtained using PySpice agree with the values obtained using LTSpice. In addition, we are getting PySpice to output the current in the branches that do not contain resistors. So this line, node V1 minus 2 amps, means that the current flowing in this branch from the positive terminal of the battery to the negative terminal in this direction is minus 2 amps. This line node V test is equal to 1.2 amps means that the current flowing through the test source in this direction is 1.2 amps. Uh, so this means that I phi is 1.2 amps. And finally this line means that the current flowing through the dependent source from the positive to the negative terminal in this direction is 0.2 amps. Next we look at the circuit with a current controlled current source and this is specified in the netlist as follows circuit.f. In addition we can also use the syntax circuit dot CCCS. We are specifying the two nodes where the where the dependent source is connected. So the positive node here is 4 and the negative node here is 3 because the current is flowing from the positive to the negative node. Since this is a current control source we need to use a VTest source in the path of the controlling current and this is specified here with the coefficient 3. The PySpice simulation result matches with the LTSpice simulation result. Please pause the video now if you wish to study this example and this netlist in more detail. This third example involves a voltage controlled current source. In the PySpice netlist, part name G is not recognized, hence the voltage control voltage source must be specified as shown here using the full acronym. In this case, the Python simulation result is shown here and this again matches very well with the LTSpice simulation result. Please pause the video now if you wish to study this example in more detail. 
Finally, this is the last example involving a voltage control voltage source. This has to be specified in the netlist as shown here. The voltage control voltage source here is connected between nodes 4 and 5 and the controlling voltage is coming from nodes 2 and 3 and the coefficient is 3. The simulation result is shown here and again it matches the result from LTSPICE. In conclusion, as demonstrated in the previous four examples, PySpice enables quick and efficient simulation of electronic circuits in Python. Thank you for watching and I hope that this video helps you in successfully simulating your circuits in PySpice.